Well, good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Ellithorpe with Tustin Longevity Center, and we are on January 31st, uh, 2023. And um, I missed last uh, week on Tuesday with the winds here and the dust and everything. My allergies were just so much. I was sneezing so much. I, I just didn't think it was appropriate, and I decided to take care of myself and it's after a long day of work every Tuesday here. I'm here at about 8, 8.30 in the morning normally. And I'm just talking all day long. So I was dried up and talked out and I was losing my voice. So I'm sorry I missed you all on last Tuesday, but hopefully you got the message by about 4 o'clock or 3.30 that uh, we had to reschedule and to our normal um, following Tuesday, which is tonight. So because of that, we have a whole bunch of questions and um, we uh, do these uh, talk to the doctor, ask the doctor questions because we are functional medicine uh, physicians, naturopaths, uh, nurse practitioners and uh, physician assistants. And here we all are gathered together. There's uh, six healthcare provider doctors. Uh, three of us are medical doctors two are naturopaths, one's a physician assistant, and uh, we are all aiming to try to look for a combined integrative way called integrative medicine to use the best of our training in medical school, naturopathic school, our PA schools, and bring in also the herbal uh, energy um, uh, natural oils, supplement, exercise, detoxing, dietary, uh, sleep, uh, aromatherapies, all these wonderful things, the acupuncture, uh, physiotherapy that will aid in helping restore your health or maintain your health and uh, move toward a more optimal uh, state of being. So this is what we call functional medicine and we are uh, testing longevity and these uh, episodes where we're talking uh, to people on the YouTube is not meant to be personal uh, medical advice for any individual person. I don't know who these people are that are um, sending in email questions. Uh, you know, some of them may be my patients. This is first name, so it could be any a number of them. I might uh, know someone. But again, these are for general responses, how we would generate, generally approach the question or symptom complex that's presented. Again, not meant to be individual medical advice. This is for educational purposes. Uh, with that, uh, we have a bunch of emails because I have two weeks worth of this. I have 31 emails, so even if I spent um, you know, two minutes on each one, I can barely make it within the hour, but I'm gonna try. Anyway, the long and the short of it is I enjoy doing this. I get great feedback if this is a, a service to you. I would ask that you would go ahead and uh, hit the like button and subscribe and share this with a family member or friend or another healthcare provider. And we'll all try and help each other towards uh, better uh, uh, maintenance of good health or restoring health if we're ailing from something. And uh, we'll start with uh, the first one uh, was last week. Cynthia asked, um, I'm not going to read the whole questions because some of these are too lengthy. Try and keep your uh, questions not into these long dissertations of like a case presentation, but what the question is. So a friend is uh, taking a leave over the counter for knee pain, and she wants to know what a better option uh, that would uh, help her uh, friend's knee pain. Well, Aleve um, is a, uh, a prescription medicine uh, that uh, is uh, designed as an anti-inflammatory, a COX uh, inhibitor. And so um, it will affect some anti-inflammatory and pain relief, but chronic use of these uh, synthetic medications um, will have other secondary effects we would rather start by asking, number one, do you need to lose some weight? Well, number one is how much water are you drinking? You know, I have the game every day of my life. You know, I have so much water. I have to get down and I've uh, filled this up again for tonight because I've already finished the pitcher. 
Water is probably your best anti-inflammatory in a general sense. Uh, most Americans don't drink enough water and it helps hydrate the cushion uh, cartilage between the knees. Number two, uh, as we age, we have less enzymes. So enzymes are God's natural anti-inflammatory. Uh, systemic enzymes are taken on an empty stomach uh, to be absorbed into the system of our body. And it works to uh, chew up and get rid of debris, uh, works within our little blood vessels to help unplug um, uh, little microclots and things like this. The other thing would be three, uh, to avoid uh, a high carbohydrate, starch and fruit sugar, processed food, uh, uh, carbohydrate sugar diet, so eliminate sugar in the diet. Number four, maybe to find out what kind of food reactivities you uh, might have if you see a functional doctor who will do IgG food sensitivities. You can do IgE food sensitivities, which are the immediate anaphylactic ones. But it is the IgG ones uh, that are the slow reacting ones. So you may be very reactive to the lectins that are in wheat and grains and reactive to hydrogenated pasteurized dairy products that ruins the milk contents of the sugars and proteins and fats in the milk and makes it very inflammatory. Stretching. Uh, so these things uh, you might add in also uh, magnesium and uh, uh, turmeric uh, or curcumin. So those would be some good suggestions, Cynthia, for your friend. She had another friend struggling with diabetes and she wanted a general alternative treatment. Again, um, most Americans and, and mo a large, almost well over 60% of the world appears to have what we call insulin resistance now. Uh, largely through drinking in sugared drinks, uh, sweetened drinks, lattes, frates, whatever they call those things at coffee shops. Um, energy drinks are uh, notoriously worse. Uh, they're usually, you know, 36 ounce, uh, you know, big jars of energy drinks. Uh, Gatorade, I think, is one of them. They have too much sugar in them. Uh, the other thing is uh, get away from all these preformed uh, drinking sources of sugar, soda pop, uh, juices, juicing, uh, and just get to water and uh, unsweetened herbal tea or uh, coffee. Then we would ask to exercise and we would ask you to eat in the time restriction of like uh, 10 to 4 or 11 to 5. And we would ask you to try and uh, reduce your uh, meals to uh, two meals per day, um, fats and proteins with a high fiber, real food vegetable that you cook up a broccoli, a uh, Brussels sprout, green beans, spinach, asparagus, things like that, buttered uh, with salt and pepper, and uh, learn to stop snacking. And uh, those would be some of the suggestions I would go there. Uh, maybe they can find a doctor who will do her hemoglobin A1C, her fasting insulin, triglycerides, fasting glucose, and uh, see how that runs for her. The number two question by Patricia is, uh, what do I say when someone asks me, why do I do hormone replacement therapy? And I, I often come back in a kind of a teasing manner and I say back to people who ask me that uh, for myself, I say, well, why do you eat? Because <clears throat> food, cholesterol, uh, is the building bone of all our hormones. And so you could say, why do you eat um, cholesterol? You know, and you have to have it. It's a wonderful molecule. It's in all of our cell membranes. It's in 50% uh, of our cell membranes are fat and it's got um, loads of cholesterol. It's very essential. 70% uh, in the membrane of your brain cells. So you must have cholesterol and that's the building block for your hormones. And that's natural. Um, I use natural hormones, not synthetic uh, only made ones like the Prem, uh, Premarin uh, or Provera. These are synthetics. But I use natural human bioidentical estradiol, natural testosterone, natural progesterone. And the reason is uh, they are what we call building molecules, signals to help repair. Remember, we have the damage here in the cell membrane and we want to fix it to a completely a uh, wonderful cell membrane that doesn't have any holes in it. And those holes need fat, 
cholesterol and protein. And uh, the uh, hormones help uh, to signal and orchestrate repair and uh, rebuilding and reshaping and so forth. And there's many, many, many benefits. Maybe estradiol itself has 400 known uh, bodily physiological needs in the human body. It helps you um, with your bone health. It helps you with your mental acuity and memory. It helps you with your uh, uh, immune system and your heart health. Uh, so I, uh, those would be some uh, quick answers that I would give Patricia. There are many more, but I'm trying to get through all these questions. Lori says, um, is there a common reason why someone gets uh, vein blood bursts in the eyes? And I think what she's referring to, I think Lori is saying you get a red eye and then suddenly all this blood is in the white part of your eye. <clears throat> and it happened uh, to her a couple of times in the recent and I find that this normally happens in the winter, in the dry time. We rub our eyes. By the way, as we age, our skin is thinning. We wrinkle. Our skin sags. Our repair, our elastin and collagen. And estradiol helps with elastin and collagen and cell membrane repair. So um, as we dry out, if we rub our eye or if we sneeze, uh, and then what happens is the very, very thin layer of your eye has these tiny, tiny, tiny capillaries. And a capillary diameter is about two and a half uh, to three microns width. And that's maybe one one hundredth of the diameter of one hair. So if I plucked one hair out and I longitudinally divided it, you know, 150 times, 100 times, then you're going to roughly see how teeny tiny a capillary is. And as the skin is thinning, uh, it's easier, and with the uh, moisture going away with aging, uh, we have drier eyes, and the irritants in the cornea happen. You can rub your eye, and a little capillary will get irritated much, much more easily. That's why when you blow your nose in the winter, often you'll see that the dry air dries the membranes on the inside lining, which is very uh, uh, filled with capillaries to try and warm the cold air of the winter before you breathe it in and it dries in the dryness, and then you bump your nose or you rub your nose, and then it cracks and you get a little nosebleed. That's the same reason there. Uh, yeah, and so she just goes on asking, you know, she had normal blood pressure in her friend who also had an episode. No, you don't have to have high blood pressure. This isn't, you know, a blood pressure issue and squirting up and busting a ves uh, vessel. It's the surface uh, drying out of this area getting traumatized. That's essentially it. Now, I could go into a whole lecture on the lining of capillaries and the cell membrane and cell membrane repair, fatty acid, phospholipid repair and everything. You have to eat a healthy real food diet, which are the building blocks of repairing your cell membrane, the proteins, amino acids, and the phospholipids, and the cholesterol. And we have gone through the disastrous governmental and foolish uh, conforming uh, educational institutions uh, complying with the silly advice of government saying we should be low fat, no fat. Oh, there are many competent people, including my father, back in the 1950s and 60s, who said this stuff about uh, cholesterol is the car cause of heart disease is foolishness. They don't know what they're talking about. But if you understand the money and lobbying in Congress and getting co uh, Congress involved, then you can understand why they said it and for making money. They don't care about us and our health. You have to have these building blocks to have beautiful skin, beautiful hair, beautiful longevity and endurance. All right, and that means your little blood vessels have to have it to stay more elastic, more pliable. All right, Josie says um, that they had high ferritin levels in the past year and went to a specialist and they were checked out for the common concerns like hemochromatosis is a disease where you just retain extra iron and uh, uh, some people have a genetic problem with that as well. Uh, all the tests were normal and they wanted to know what could be causing this. Could it be high metals, 
heavy metal uh, leads, mercury, um, arsenic, aluminum. Uh, would chelation help? The short answer is yes. Uh, chelation is known to help lower um, uh, iron levels, and that's well established. In fact, I was involved in trying to get a research grant for uh, doing a study on chelation therapy for hemochromatosis uh, with chelation therapy. Uh, she asked about a product, Pecticlear from Econugenics. Pecticlear from Econugenics will help this. Um, I think this is pectin. Pectin itself is a plant uh, product that um, has some chelating ability, so it's a chelation product. Uh, so um, yes, it is probably from the name of it, but I don't know that product in particular, so don't take this as an endorsement. So uh, ferritin also can be elevated in other just general inflammatory conditions, low-grade chronic inflammation, that is often missed by physicians, clinicians, are chronic tooth decay and uh, root canal um, osteum uh, necrosis of the uh, jaw and tooth. These are often uh, uh, missed because once you had a root canal, you don't have nerves anymore and you don't realize that you have an infection there. So uh, you need to go see a biological dentist, get very special 3D x-rays to look very clearly at any root canal. Uh, I don't uh, support putting in root canals and uh, that would be another cause of it, high ferritin, have your iron levels checked and so forth. But this is probably a low grade infection from maybe some uh, teeth work that, that need to be done, Josie. All right, so that's a brief answer that might get you on your way with a little more information. Lexi asked the question, I'm having a terrible time with heartburn. Uh, I'm avoiding the list of heartburn triggering foods, spicy foods. Uh, and she says uh, she gets heartburn when she's eaten a meal and while on an empty stomach. What do you suggest? Well, Lexi, um, I would want to know how old you are. I would want to know what your hemoglobin and hematocrit are. I would want to know if you have any blood in your stool, if you're having an ulcer. Uh, if you're a blood type O, O's tend to have the majority of the uh, ulcers. And if you are hungry or you uh, see restaurant and smell the food, it'll trigger a cephalic phase of digestion and you'll start secreting stomach acids and enzymes just at the smell of food, kind of getting you ready to eat. But uh, your body doesn't realize it's in the 21st century where just every place is puffing out there at the smell of their restaurant foods to entice you to come in. And that can, that if you already make extra acid as a blood typo, and then you're smelling this and you start getting secretion from the cephalic phase, thinking about food or watching the food channel or, or uh, recipe uh, videos. I, I do study some recipe videos and I've noticed that happen to myself. Uh, I would say to you, uh, see a doctor, check those things out to make sure you don't have an ulcer. And uh, that's why that can happen when you're on an empty stomach and, um, uh, when you have a uh, heartburn after you've eaten a meal, <coughs> if you're starting to get the signs of a ulcer and gastritis, the or release of the acid and digestive enzymes may <coughs> create a problem there. So here I'm going talking so fast, I'm starting to uh, get dried out. So what would I do? One of the things uh, I think is very, very helpful is to use something called uh, Glutashield. Glutashield is a powder that you can mix in water. It's got uh, glutamine powder, some zinc in it and such. This helps uh, the lining of the gut. Uh, Bio uh, Pro uh, PC, which is phospholipid powders mixed with uh, Glutashield or with SBI Protect powders. These are all gut uh, formulas. SBI Protect is a secretory IgA um, that is uh, uh, derived naturally and uh, concentrated into a powder mix to help the immune lining and system of the gut. Uh, another powder is Glutashield. It's a glutamine base uh, with zinc also. That's a separate product. That's helpful. And uh, BioPro PC Plus is meaning uh, uh, phosphatidylcholine, phospholipids uh, that are in a powdered form that help the fatty lining of the membrane. Probiotics, good bacteria help it. 
Um, so see your doctor and uh, you can use these powders uh, multiple times a day rather than trying to take in acids. If you are a blood type A, you could have the opposite end of the spectrum, whereas those have too much acid and ulcers are a concern. You can be a blood type A with too little acid and enzyme production and food sits in your stomach for hours and hours and hours. Uh, the older you get, the longer it lasts, the poorer your digestion for everyone. A's are the worst. And if undigested food is still in your stomach, it can kind of burp back up into your esophagus uh, at the esophageal stomach junction there. And that uh, even a pH of a four and a half is uh, acidic compared to the pH of the esophagus, which should be seven. And you would get that sense of heartburn even on an empty stomach. You think it's empty, but it might still have all that uh, chyme liquid um, under digested food and your duodenum won't open up to let it out until the acid in your stomach uh, gets at least down to about a two uh, range because acid is supposed to kill off bad stuff and bacteria. So by uh, taking a digestive enzyme that has betaine hydrochloric acid in like our ortho digestime. So I had my dinner, you know, at four o'clock today to make sure I'm not burping during this time. So ortho digestime, and then this has the betaine hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes in it. Uh, and that greatly helps me. So there's many things, see your functional doctor and try these uh, very safe uh, uh, natural methods and see if that's a big uh, help to you. Um, Asia said, uh, doc, hi, Dr. Althorpe. Uh, what do you think about DMSO? That's dimethyl sulfoxide. Dimethyl sulfoxide is a, uh, a um, uh, medically used um, chemical that is, helps to carry things through um, membranes. For instance, <coughs> some people have mixed uh, dimethyl uh, uh, sulfane in uh, with uh, EDTA chelation in a mix that's topically uh, pasted onto children who will not sit still for a chelation IV and you absorb the EDTA chelation through the skin and then it uh, detoxes heavy metal toxins that way. Uh, DMSO is put sometimes in um, other uh, topicals uh, to enhance the absorption uh, penetration. So it is a carrier molecule. So yeah, uh, it's fine. It smells like garlic. It has a very pungent smell. Uh, I used to use a lot of it in the 1990s with my chelations, but the smell was so pungent uh, that it became, became really intolerable, you know, for anyone who had to be in the IV room for any length of time, the patient sitting there two, three hours, the nurse so uh, it didn't seem to advance the end goal of uh, detoxing uh, that much. So although I'm not against it, and although I know uh, it has um, its uh, uh, potential value, there just isn't enough money that is given to us to work in natural fields uh, to do further testing in this area. So I'm a practical doctor, uh, clinician, and I decided we're not going to do that, and we will just move forward with the uh, very safe and well-tolerated standard calcium disodium EDT chelations. Uh, there is no brand that I know of because I don't use it. Sorry, Asia. Carolyn says, can you go over the protocol to use when one feels a cold upper respiratory symptoms coming on? She rarely catches cold but has a seven-year-old granddaughter and what can parents do uh, when kids catch a cold? How can we build up the child's immune system? Well, it's um, lifestyle. Everything is lifestyle and uh, eating real food. Uh, just making a rule as the father of the house and mother that you're going to eat real food. You're not buying processed food. That will eliminate close to 80% everything, of everything that's in the grocery store. Pre-packaged, uh, pre-made, uh, box opening uh, even can opening material because they're using BPA in the cans now uh, so much. So uh, use real food, cook meat and vegetables and salads, cook uh, uh, fish vegetables and salads, cook uh, um, uh, chicken vegetables and salad, cook 
pork vegetables and salad, cook uh, omelets, uh, uh, all wild caught, free range, prairie raised. Uh, teach your children about the dangers of these um, other things. These foods are rich in the building blocks that build the uh, white blood cells. Uh, remember, if you're going to build enough white blood cells and immunoglobulin antibodies, you have to have enough protein and fat to build those cell membranes. So you don't need a synthetic, you know, um, I can't believe it is butter. Uh, remember those commercials of Mother Earth and and when they came out with margarine and, and then you had to add, squirt the yellow in to make it look yellow. All these foolish things we've done, all these oil, uh, seed oils that are sitting in the <clears throat> the aisles that uh, have clear uh, or, or lightly colored uh, walls and the light can get to it and just destroy the fatty acids in these oil bottles. They're rancid. People are cooking with these oils and making them uh, acrylics and, and hydrogenated fats, trans fatty acids. Get rid of all this synthetic stuff. Lard, beef tallow, butter, coconut oil, and use your olive oil on uh, salads. Use your olive oil uh, you know, you can take it uh, as a tablespoon and swallow it down, but don't cook with any mono or polyunsaturated fats. Use lard, uh, coconut oil, uh, beef tallow, butter, uh, coconut oil, and leave it at that. The other thing then is uh, vitamin D. Uh, I would get the drops of vitamin D. Uh, there are like 400 international units per dropper or per drop. You'd have to look on the little bottle and go by the age or poundage of the child and give the number of drops or the marker on the little eyedropper uh, tube there to the child. I would support with vitamin D supplementation. I also am a strong believer in all the research in Juice Plus. Juice Plus has probably uh, well over a million, I don't even know what the number is anymore, but for 20 some years, we have been giving Juice Plus for free to uh, uh, the parents of children 18 and under, and if they're in college, uh, if they give their email uh, to the college so we know they're an active person in college, uh, we have given free Juice Plus, which is fruit, vegetables, and berries in um, uh, a concentrate. And these children can get the fruits and berries uh, in chewables or in capsule form, and they can get that for four years, for four years. So we had a lot of time to do all kinds of um, studies on them. These are easy um, um, internet questionnaires. How often do you go to the doctor? How often are you sick? How often are you on medicine using it? How many days do you miss from school? How much? Things like this. And so uh, the child goes on it six months later before they get their next six month supply. They answer the questions again and see we see this wonderful drop off on illness rates, on sicknesses, and so forth. If you have any questions, about how to get that, you know, you can call uh, 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 the office here, 714-544-1521, and you can speak with Terry, my nurse, and she'll uh, let you know how to try and get a hold of some. So juice plus vitamin D, eat real food, drink water, not juice. Remember, juices are so full of sugar. Those are the sugar drinks, the juicing, the orange juice, the apple juice, foolishness, foolishness. Don't use that. Just make that the rule in your house. Now, you set the example as the parent, and don't let them see you drinking that either. Um, exercise, fresh air, uh, not eating late at night, not staying up with these uh, lights and these uh, uh, TV uh, um, electromagnetic energy frequencies um, inhibiting melatonin for deep and restorative sleep. If they want to grow, they have to get sleep because you only heal at night. So if the boy wants to be tall and strong, he's got to go to bed. Uh, you only heal at night. That's the primary uh, function of sleep uh, is restoration and refreshment and repair and growth. So um, water, all these things, that's what I would do. And uh, you could buy a... Um, uh, you know, children's multivitamin that has zinc in it, that zinc would be very valuable. But remember, meat, fish, chicken, pork, eggs, all these things are rich in the uh, complete nutrients 
<coughs> that are needed. Zinc is in the meat and the fish and the chicken and, and the beef. These uh, healthy, free-range foods have sustained mankind uh, since God made the earth 6,000 years ago. All right. Now, the next question is... Uh, all right, we're done with one page. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Rebecca, uh, have you ever heard of nitric oxide? Yes, for sure. And if so, is it good to take? Yes, it is. Um, but we make it. Our, our body makes it. The lining of all your blood vessels make it. But if you're messing up with diet and, uh, uh, you know, a process, a lifestyle, your uh, lining of your blood vessels are not going to respond very well. Take, uh, she asked the question, um, they're talking about shedding of the uh, spike proteins. Would nitric oxide help? The answer is yes. Uh, it helps dilate blood vessels. Um, it is a natural thing. Nitric oxide synthetase is an enzyme that's in the wall, and just uh, uh, the triggering of the release and activation of that enzyme to release nitric oxide uh, is waiting there, but it can be messed up with, you know, a high sugar diet, not enough water, lack of exercise, processed foods, chemical toxins, and of course the spike protein, which uh, you make if you get the mRNA injection. Uh, and we don't know how long you'll make it and uh, uh, how much spike protein you'll produce. So I would be cautious uh, about considering anything that would generate spike protein. Um, so, um, what else could you do? You know, exercise generates uh, nitric oxide. EDTA chelation uh, is known to uh, generate nitric oxide. Uh, certain supplements help uh, give it, like uh, L-arginine and uh, L-citrulline help stimulate it. Again, that's in your meat and fish and chicken and turkey. A low-carb diet helps it. Uh, fasting helps it. So yes, that would work. Um, David says uh, that they've been dealing with Hashimoto since 2009. He was well managed with Armour Thyroid 90 milligrams. He had a thyroid storm due to a, uh, a scan dye that was an iodine-based scan dye. And he felt the thyroid storm, or his doctor felt the thyroid storm was a reaction to the iodine in the um, scan, uh, CT scan that he was doing that created the storm. And he had palpitations, restless sleep, inflammation. What do I think? Well, I want you to understand there's a big difference between the uh, uh, radioactive nuclear iodine scan composition. It's a whole organic synthetic chemical with iodine in it versus iodine the salt, okay? Iodine the salt. Iodine itself is not going to harm you. A big synthetic foreign molecule with a little iodine on it, it could hurt you. Uh, it's rare, but it does happen. So uh, that was unfortunate. But don't become a person who thinks that iodine itself then is the harm. It's not that. Uh, the other thing is um, more often uh, we are in a situation where we're eating such processed foods, food allergies, lectins, environmental chemicals, pesticides, herbicide, fungicide, air pollution, uh, high carb diet, processed food, trans fatty acid, hydrogenated foods that our cell membranes are too easy to trigger and get inflamed. It makes a leaky gut. Our immune system is always on the alert, kind of like an um, unorganized but angry army. And then it auto attacks your joints and you get arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. It attacks your nerves and you get, uh, you know, uh, MS or other things like that. It attacks the thyroid and you can get thyroiditis. So there are many things here calming this whole story down is working with a well-informed doctor who can take step-by-step, block-by-block, and start with helping you to clean up your diet. <clears throat> Drink enough water. Not eat late. Lower your carbs. 
and then start looking for hidden food allergies, things that create inflammation unbeknownst to us from even our diet. Start giving you things that heal the gut and helping your liver work for uh, proper detoxification. And then you're ready to look at your thyroglobulin, thyroid peroxide antibodies slowly come down over time and look at uh, your uh, complete digestive stool analysis, how you're working there. So that's what you would have to do uh, to try and help yourself uh, with that, David. All right, so find a good functional doctor. Leah says, uh, can cold water plunges negatively impact the adrenals? Uh, she was doing this and uh, two, three minute cold water showers. <laughs> And my insomnia uh, got significantly worse. I have more belly fat now. All right. The big answer to that is only there's a time and a place for everything, it says in Ecclesiastics. And so I would say um, for the most part, a cold shower after being uh, warm is a healthy thing in a generally healthy person. And we're designed to be eating real food uh, with the building blocks that replace us were made of fat and protein. We eat some vegetables and such to help get some micronutrients and minerals, but we're composed of the uh, meat and fat. Now, secondarily, uh, that stress, if you're not in a good place to detox and to handle that added stress of the cold, your adrenals are not ready. If you didn't know what your cortisol level was, you're probably stressing out your adrenals and when that squirt of adrenal comes out, what does it do? All cortisol excess turns to fat. So that's where your problem is, in my humble opinion. That's the direction I would start looking at uh, for you, Cynthia. No, Leah. Leah. Okay. Cynthia is the next one. So her daughter-in-law has a beautiful, uh, sweet five-month-old baby boy. And she wonders what uh, she can take uh, while breastfeeding. She's still on her prenatal vitamins. Uh, I, in general, don't like prenatal vitamins uh, because they're usually uh, uh, inferior to the more uh, organic amino chelates, Albion-based minerals, methylated B-complexes, which would make it more expensive. That's why they don't uh, give you the good stuff. She's A-type blood and... She'll go back to uh, working as a teacher in April, and she wants to continue breastfeeding. Well, you got to eat real food. You got to do, like I said, on the other person, eliminate the processed foods, eliminate the sugar drinks, get a good night's sleep, uh, drink enough water if you're breastfeeding, and eat a balanced, uh, uh, reasonable meat vegetable, fish vegetable, chicken vegetable, pork vegetable, egg vegetable diet on a rotating basis and a uh, low carb and uh, use the digestive enzyme when she eats, she's blood type A, so she can extract out of those meats, pork, fish, vegetables and all, and the eggs, more nutrients. And uh, I, I personally have all my A type, in fact, I have all my patients and children on Juice Plus, vitamin D, iodine, a low dose, one little tablet a day called iodorol. And I have them on a multi-mineral that we make out of all the highest quality methylated Bs, uh, minerals that are Albion, amino acid, chelates, and so forth. So with that multi, the D, the antioxidant of Juice Plus, and the iodine, uh, that is a sure uh, recipe for well-being. Um, and I'm not bringing up the need for any oil capsules because if you're eating healthy uh, fats and cooking with healthy saturated fats, uh, like I listed and healthy foods, you probably shouldn't need a oil supplementation. Uh, Dorothy asks, are dried mushroom powders equal to fresh mushrooms? No, they're not. Um, it, nothing that has even minimal processing, just like drying it out in the healthiest way you're going to lose some of the activity and nutrient contents. <clears throat> However, um, I think it's a moot point, and we're never going to get the money and financing until we start uh, stopping uh, big pharma and big uh, lobbyists uh, from 
uh, controlling the food industry and marketing and pharmaceuticals. We need to have localized uh, community state uh, research funded locally by uh, interested people and we can do projects locally. We don't need uh, separate little centers uh, that have lobbyist money that by uh, science with their outcomes already predetermined by the volume of money they donate to their institutions. And that's a reality fact. Just read something, some of the uh, articles by um, Dr. Engel. Uh, Dr. Engel was the, Marsha Engel was the chief editor for New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, I, forget, I think was, his name was Hoffman, was the Lancet former uh, chief editor of the Lancet. And there are others. These, these physicians uh, have all written articles saying uh, most of the published material in these peer-reviewed uh, uh, journals, well over 60% is bought off science. Terrible, disgusting. Uh, Isabel says um, she woke up with pu puffy red lips and wonders why. Uh, and what do I think is the thought of this? I think it's the dryness of the winter and the dry air heating micro cracks in the uh, coverage and it makes you uh, uh, things penetrate quicker, faster, easier through the cracking and so forth. So it doesn't have to be the lipstick or the Vaseline. It can be something else you touched or you know wiped your mouth with accidentally. Uh, this is rare. Um, it's in its worst form would be like an angioedema. If this is recurrent, you should see your doctor. Uh, certainly if it continues or, or seems to spread, you have to go to the emergency room and make sure this isn't a true uh, um, allergic reaction emergency. But most of these things are happening to us. Our skin gets more sensitive with age, more reactive because it thins. We get cracks and dry out in the winter months so the common little things that usually couldn't penetrate as deep on our lips tend to penetrate deeper and become reactive. That's likely what it is. Lisa says uh, she has a friend suffering from shingles on her chest. Uh, her doctor recommended a antiviral medicine, probably velcyclovir, acyclovir, uh, because herpes is a varicella and um, acyclovir is designed to be an antibody against the uh, 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 varicella uh, herpes uh, item. Now, are there any additional things she can do? Um, she had COVID in December, so that was of stress. Uh, and is there a correlation in getting shingles afterward? Yeah, after any kind of a stressful event, uh, so for some people, COVID was so stressful that they broke out. And the reason is uh, stress causes cortisol to go uh, be used up. And with cortisol, that suppresses the immune system. We all have the varicella zoster from chickenpox exposure, herpes in our lips, or some of us have the genital herpes. And uh, that lives in the uh, dorsal horn of our spinal canal in a quiescent, quiet state all our lives. But when your immune system gets stressed out, your cortisol uh, is high which suppresses the immune system, then it can break out along a nerve root and cause what we call shingles. What we do is high-dose vitamin C, uh, intravenous strips. We do a series <clears throat> of about twice a week for a month or uh, even three times a week. And uh, we usually see with high-dose vitamin C, it really knocks it out because that's an antiviral and it's all safe. Plus your body needs that we make no vitamin C also getting your vitamin D levels up, going on a low sugar diet, maybe even fasting, going on a, a broth diet, chicken broth, beef broth for two, three days, just so that your whole immune system can revive itself. And by not eating, if you could uh, do that, depending on if you're a diabetic, you'd have to see your doctor. But if you're not, you should be able to go a day or two on a clear liquid diet, just using chicken broth and uh, uh, that would help uh, take a, a stress off your immune system and recover. Uh, all right, so what's the difference, uh, Lisa asked, 
in preventatively treating COVID with ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine, is there any reason to use one over the other uh, for a period of time and then change to the other? Uh, and the answer is there really isn't any. The only thing I would say is uh, <coughs> hydroxychloroquine is clearly needed in the early phase treatment or prevention. Hydroxychloroquine works best to prevent or in the early phases. Whereas ivermectin works very well to prevent and in the early phases, but it also is very effective. Uh, it appears in many studies to be uh, of value in uh, the uh, later development of COVID situations. So if there's any advantage, uh, I would say that's, uh, you'd give a, another star to ivermectin and that would be the most notable one. So I don't uh, think I would change one from the other or you could use hydroxychloroquine preventatively all the time, but have ivermectin on hand so that if uh, it, you get a breakthrough and uh, you use hydroxychloroquine uh, 200 milligrams twice a day for five days, then uh, if you're still not doing well, <clears throat> then you can bring in, let's say, ivermectin at 0.4 milligram per kilogram, which would be, you know, for an average woman, 150 pounds, about 15 milligrams uh, a day for five to seven days. And that should do the trick along with maybe if necessary, uh, azithromycin, adequate vitamin C, adequate D, and uh, zinc. Uh, Elizabeth says, um, are there medical health benefits based on our faith or our belief system? Uh, and the answer is absolutely yes. If you talk to any actuarial insurance person, one of the questions you often get when you're doing uh, health insurance is they find out about your lifestyles and so forth. If you're married, that relationship is always associated with living healthier and longer. So marital relationships that are lasting are usually uh, producing the longest, healthiest lived people. Uh, people who attend church services on a regular basis, uh, you know, you can miss, miss a Sunday here and there, but that have a regular commitment of a uh, church they can name, that's their church, they're known there, and they try and participate in the community. So that's socialization. And yes, uh, you know, insurance companies know this, absolutely a uh, faith-based uh, uh, belief system <clears throat> being part of a, a group, a marriage, a uh, faith system, and um, an assembly uh, is always associated with a longer uh, lifespan, fewer medical problems. Then she goes on to ask, uh, she picked up a sample of ATP Ignite, uh, adenosine triphosphate is the energy molecule of the mitochondrial uh, Krebs cycle. And that produces the energy that serves your whole body. So uh, how do we ignite it? Well, ATP Ignite is a powder, B vitamin, and certain nutrient complex that provides a burst of powdered, in powdered form uh, items, largely the B vitamins in water. You put it in water and you take it before a workout or if you're getting tired at work or you have work to do on the weekend and you want a burst of energy, uh, this is what that is, yes. So that's what that is. So we're done with all last weeks and I have 10 minutes left. <laughs> all right, so Don says, uh, uh, she. this is uh, too long and the whole page to one question, that's, that's kind of uh, taking too much time to yourself. Uh, I would spread this out. But anyway, um, did I miss the annual TLC group fasting visit? Uh, we're not doing that annual TLC group fasting visit event. We're, we're recommending uh, continuous intermittent fasting all the time for the most part to almost every one of our patients. Number two, a 16-year-old menstruating female continues to have estrogen dumping uh, on day one of her period with vomiting, diarrhea, exhaustion, cramping, hot, cold flashes, strong body odor, and uh, uses progesterone cream days 15 through 25. She had muscle spasms also associated on day one and uh, twitching uh, enough to be concerning. Uh, she was given magnesium. 
She sleeps off the symptoms on day one. It's mostly normal by day two, but usually one day per month, she loses uh, from uh, work. Uh, she doesn't get vacation time. So that's 12 days lost. And that's a big in impact. What would I suggest? Uh, could high beta glucuronidase be a factor? Yes, beta glucuronidase uh, is made by the body, but it's made a lot by the uh, bad gut bacteria. So if you eat a lousy diet, which most people do, and are insulin resistant, then they're going to feed the bad bacteria. The bad bacteria make a lot of beta glucuronidase, and that will recycle the um, estrogen that is produced. Uh, there's a peak in the first part of the month of estrogen production in the cycle, and that peak then uh, has to be processed out of the body. And if you have a lot of beta glucuronidase, when it passes through the liver, for instance, for detoxification of estradiol, it is packaged and beta glucuronidase will break up that packaging uh, that went through the effort to make it uh, water soluble so you could poop it out and pee it out so that you recycle the estrogen all the time and you have a net building up of this kind of like heavy metal toxicity is a net building up. Um, yeah, so uh, beta glucuronidase could be a factor and that's cleaning up your whole lifestyle. You might use some calcium deglucurate uh, to help with uh, uh, getting rid of that. Many other wonderful things. Uh, many people take, she goes on uh, with high estrogen. Many people take uh, diendol methane that also helps uh, liver, I mean, uh, estrogen detoxification. Uh, broccoli is rich in substances uh, that help uh, eliminate and is one of the substances in diendol methane. There's indole products in broccoli. Yeah, calcium deglucurate is in there. Yeah, that will lower the beta glucuronidase. So good bacteria, better diet. Um, diandol methane, uh, eating broccoli, uh, cauliflower, things like that would be the way to go. But uh, a woman like this needs to be seen by the doctor who is familiar with liver phase one and phase two det uh, detoxification pathways and all the many things involved. Um, you could have a simple lecture on it. You could have a long two-hour lecture on it. But the basic thing is cleaning out the uh, pesticides and uh, uh, herbicides, fungicides, uh, the uh, plasticizers, the heavy metal toxins, you know, getting rid of packaged, processing food, going organic <laughs> as much as you can, and then uh, not eating late, lowering the carbs, drinking your water, and then using certain nutrients that support uh, liver detoxification, and that's too complex to go into here. And uh, the other thing would be lo looking at the age, the weight of the person, other comorbidities they probably might have, and uh, looking at their hormone balance and checking it at the time of the month of ovulation, making sure the progesterone is high enough. Uh, maybe checking twice a month her estrogen uh, during the early phase and the later phase of the cycle. Lots of things that need to be done, maybe doing a stool analysis and actually measuring the beta glucuronidase in the stool. So, uh, Don, this is so complex. You have to really see a good uh, functional doctor and work that through. Uh, Lisa is asking... Uh, Regarding the left nodule with inferior pole, so that's the left inferior pole, she had an ultrasound and the carotids were normal. Ultrasound of the thyroid revealed a six millimeter nodule that shouldn't by that size, that's small enough not to be of concern. Uh, and then repeat in January of 23, a year later roughly, or months later, uh, the, it was seven millimeter stable. Uh, I take supplements, no medications of any kind, exercise with weights, elliptical walking, no fried foods, no dairy or unhealthy carbs. My question is, is calcification a buildup of calcium? Yes. What causes inflammation? Just aging in itself uh, because um, oxidative stress, inflammation is the cause of tiny micro uh, free radicals throughout our whole body, even your batteries of your mitochondria 
just to make the energy of your thyroid, which is a big organ that has to produce this for the metabolism of the body, generates free radicals just to do it. That's why you need to make sure you're on something like Juice Plus or good antioxidants so that you can kind of absorb those free radicals of normal uh, mitochondrial function. But some of them get loose and uh, we can't keep up with them all. And ultimately one day we'll all die from that. Remember those free radicals generate in the cell membrane of your thyroid and every other part of your body, these damage holes in your membrane. And we have to fix it by eating uh, real uh, genuine replacement products of meat, fish, turkey, chicken, beef, eggs, fat, cholesterol, and all those things that we're made of because that's what we're, we're made of. Lee says, what are the best treatments for many bug bites looking itchy spots of the whole body? Some bites have redness around the scabs. How do you know if it's uh, the scabs or bites are infected? What do you do if it's infected? Can antibiotic cream, Benadryl, hydrocortisone cream help? Are people with eczema more susceptible for bites due to excess dead skins? What supplements will help? Thank you so much. Well, uh, look at... Um, this is something that I would have to see. Now, it could be scabies, you know, and that's a bed bug. And it's a whole different kind of medication that you would use topically. Uh, ivermectin uh, topical creams uh, would help with that. <laughs> so that's a total different thing. Well, how do you know if they're infected? Well, they get red, inflamed, and uh, start making a little white pustule, yellow pustule discharge or bleed. Uh, what I would do is um, I would clean up my diet because very often the skin is a dumping zone for toxins. And uh, we're feeding bad bacteria and uh, we become uh, irritated in our skin and it breaks down easier and, and surface bacteria because bacteria and fungi uh, live all over our, our uh, bodies and in our, our gut. I would use Argentin Silver, that spray, and I would put it on you know, uh, spray all these areas, uh, you know, have clean sheets and, and uh, stay dry. I would not take showers, get wet or anything. I would let my skin grow and get thick. I would just wash under my arms and grind and feet. And I would try and not shower in a hot shower because that'll swell and break and crack your skin. And also uh, I would uh, not put soap on your body. I would just put soap to your pits because God designed for there to be layers of epithelia that create a perfect sealant, just like the shingles on your roof. And so we don't need to scrub our roofs. Uh, we just need good shingles. So we need good dead cells that are piled up. And if you keep on showering and rinsing them away and scraping them off, you're going to be easier to crack and penetrate and get itchy skin, especially in the dry month seasons. So don't shower. Uh, don't do hot showers. Uh, try and use a, a as cool uh, a shower as you can. Uh, do a military three-minute minute shower. Jump in, do your hair, wash your pits, hop out, and only let soap touch your pits and your hair, and then uh, dry off. And then spray your skin with the Argentan silver where the red spots are. And that should, uh, within the week, you should start seeing a healing if you're not, uh, if you're doing everything I'm telling you. And then uh, in two weeks, it'll just gradually get better and better and better. It takes about four months to make a whole new layer of skin, but that's what I'd do. And if you don't see improvement in the next two, three weeks doing that, see your doctor. Donna says, you may recall that you treated me for my stage four endometrial cancer with a 50 milligram high dose vitamin C. I don't, Donna. Uh, I, and it, I don't mean to be rude or anything, but I see hundreds and thousands of people many of which have the name Donna, but um, I wish I remembered. However, during my recent visit to Dr. Mahmoud's, he prescribed vaginal uh, estradiol inserts, uh, 10 micrograms three times a week because the estriol cream was causing other issues with my body. Uh, when I read the warning label, endometrial cancer, I wanted to inquire if it's safe to use this product after being cancer-free for three and a half years. Um, the The... It's very likely that um, those 10 micrograms, that's such a teensy weeny tiny dose locally, uh, should be well tolerated. But I would do an estradiol level. So if you're one of our patients, my patient, I would want to see you and discuss this. So I don't want this to be an answer on YouTube. Uh, I want you to make this a formal call 
to the office so it can get in your chart and we'll address it in that fashion. But in general, local, uh, tiny, tiny dose estradiol. Now I want to tell you, uh, the other thing is many women drink wine too much and wine will aggravate the liver detox and what little estradiol is generated in the body will build up so that you could actually have so much estradiol built up in your body. If you had cancer, breast cancer, ovarian, uterine cancer, you can have levels that um, are even higher than women who are on hormone replacement therapy without cancer. That's because estradiol needs to go through detox. So if you have a, uh, a lifestyle that is uh, uh, the typical sad American diet lifestyle and you're drinking wine or alcohol, you need to get your estradiol checked. So Donna, if you're my patient, let's turn this into a office visit or at least a telephone consult. And I know Dr. Mahmood, I know he would not prescribe something that would be at all harmful. He's a wonderful doctor. Barbara, the sleep supplement TLC, good night, you sold me. Did not help with my sleep at all. Do you have other recommendations? Thanks in advance. Uh, I would say um, uh, there are many things that go into a good night's sleep. Um, I don't know your, your age. I don't know your other medicines. I don't know your uh, stress situation. I don't know your working situation or if you're retired. I don't know if you have any other comorbidities. Um, so uh, sleep is very important, and that's something that you need to work with your doctor, work it out until we start getting solutions. Um, exercise uh, done at the right time and enough of it should exhaust the body, getting it ready. Having uh, electromagnetic light hitting your eyes uh, too late at night uh, will uh, inhibit melatonin release and activity. Getting a blue light screen for your glasses. I have a blue light screen built into my glasses, but also you can get it on your screen. Uh, there are many, many things that you can do to help with this. Uh, so Barbara, uh, if you are a patient here, please uh, make a uh, phone call and turn this into a formal visit. I believe uh, sleep is important because that's how you heal. Karen says, is too dust safe and effective for liver health? Does TLC sell this? No, it doesn't, because I don't know what two dust safe is. So um, that I don't know what more to say on that uh, two dust safe. Uh, I'm not going to look that up. It's after seven, and I've worked since about uh, six this morning doing things and getting ready for work today. So I am exhausted, and I want to take care of my health. So I love the questions I see here. I have one, two. Uh, three pages left, uh, but the last page is just uh, one one tiny question, and I didn't get a chance uh, to get to any of these here. Uh, garden feather, I don't like cortis cortisone injections for trigger points. I don't like it. Talon, I love you too, my son. Uh, uh, Pamela says, what do you think of uh, chlorophyll additive? Uh, to water. I, I'm, I'm, I would have to say I can't endorse it because I don't know the product. Uh, uh, chorlo, chlorophyll, that's basically a chlorophyll uh, type product. Um, and very often chlorophyll was created by God to uh, attract uh, mercury. And uh, you might be putting mercury in your system if you don't have a quality control system. So be cautious about that. And then uh, how can I order supplements on your website? Christina, uh, I would call the um, uh, wellness store 714-544-1521 and ask that question, Christina, because I, I don't know how to do it myself because I'm here every day of my life. <laughs> And I, I, I don't need to do it, so I haven't learned that, honey, and I'm so sorry. What do you think about lectins in some foods? Should we avoid those foods or just cook them to reduce the lectins? I avoid them because the foods like beans, if you cook them real well, and they're very notorious for having lectins that irritate our gut lining. The problem is uh, uh, it's rich in uh, carbohydrates, and uh, genetic modification of these 
uh, legumes that are typically the ones we, we often cook enough so we don't kind of reduce the, the lectins. Uh, they're so genetically modified now that even you can't cook that out of them. So there you have it. And uh, Mark Vara says, how do you treat Lyme? That's, I can't even begin that question. It's so late. Mark, um, Lyme is a very complex uh, uh, Bordetilla uh, tick-borne uh, disease. It's chronic. Uh, usually it's uh, treated with uh, antibiotics long-term, such as dexycycline, and uh, that uh, for many months, and it's followed up with repeat testing. Uh, but the whole entire functional medicine approach is brought to bear so uh, that's what I would say. Uh, see your healthcare uh, functional doctor. Kim says, uh, you've been hearing about blood clots caused by the COVID shot. Is there any way to prevent that happening? Well, I would say take N-acetylcysteine, you know, do all the healthy uh, diet, clean out the, the uh, sugars that promote stickiness, drink enough water, get a good night's sleep. But systemic enzymes like Vascuzyme or Vitalzyme take morning and evening, two or three morning and evening for sure. Don't eat late at night, stay active and mobile. And then uh, N-acetylcysteine, uh, and what was the other item? N-acetylcysteine. <sighs> what was the other item? I can't think of it right now, it's so late, but um, N-acetylcysteine would help. Okay, yes. So good night, my dear uh, uh, Test and Longevity Health Freedom Tribe. God bless, keep you. If this benefits you, please like and subscribe, share with a family or friend. I will get the rest of these answered next week and uh, we'll go from there. God bless and stay healthy.